Welcome, BBCers, to episode number 116 of the Broken by Concept Solo Q Improvement Podcast. Solo Q, Solo Q, Solo Q, Champion Mastery, Champion Mastery, Champion Mastery. So, two weeks ago, Curtis, we talked about the new Udia, all right? Quote, I think the, t- the title that we made of the video is, Will Nathan get rank one with new Udia? And I was really excited about the rework. And I said, right, did a fantastic job. And, you know, I played one day, right, of the champion, right? The next day I played it and I went like zero wins and like eight losses, right? Just all red and it was a quite a miserable experience. Um, and then I have not played it since and I'm not playing it. All right. And the key thing here, Curtis, is um, remember that. Remember how I said, remember I said that... No matter how much I, I want to figure it out, I was super excited to figure out, right? And I, I, I literally would visualize that this happened. And we say all the time, like the losses, you shouldn't be getting an effective level. You got to get into the details. And I genuinely didn't have fun at all playing that game that way. And it was this huge realization for me. So this, guys, this is not cap at all, okay? This is, this is I, I've genuinely thought about this, all right? This might be like, well, Nathan, you said something. So... I was really pissed off at myself for having such a knee jerk reaction to one Think about that one day, you know, you know, you know, the way that I think about it, it's like a little kid on Christmas that like plays with a toy for two days and then just throws the toy out. You know what I mean? Like, like how how just like not disgraceful, but like how, again, it's like a knee jerk reaction. Like that's just not our fault. We're thinking long term, that sort of stuff and broken my concept. I was really, I was really deep dive into thinking about like, why did I do that? And obviously the, the key thing is, you know, that was the way I played the game. And that's the way I enjoyed the game back in season three, season four, which is how many years? Eight years ago, right? Um, and then I, I've just changed and I realized how much I've changed as a player and how I just don't enjoy being, you know, playing like those weaker early junglers. Like I really want to do things early. And I've sort of like really been focused on the early game for like the last two, three years. And that's actually been some of my things that I had to work on a lot this year and still working on. It's like my mid game, my team fighting skirmishing is still really poor. And a champion like Udia, like it's really reliant on stuff, something like that. Um, so we'll get your thoughts in a second, Curtis. What else do I need to cover for this one? Um, I, yes, yeah, so, cause I took a bit of a break from Rex. Okay. The next thing here is I, well, actually let's just start with that first. Cause I want to go to another topic after that, talking about time. So what do you think about that Curtis so far? Well, um, at the time you said it, I genuinely believed you. Generally, believe, I genuinely believed it myself, right? I looked authentic. Yeah, I, I think authentic. I think that you, yeah, it, it probably had something to do with your just your past experiences with Udia. My think, idea of myself, or like the player I was. I think you just you just had an emotional connection with Udia as a mm. champion. You know, he, you played him. He was your identity as a player for the longest time. Like you were known. For years and years and years, as even to this day, people still yeah like the, the, the new Udia. People like message me like, oh, is this the return? You know, we're talking. Is Nathan going to rank one the new Udia? Like the expectation from the others is I'm the Udia guy as well. Yeah, and I think that's kind of reinforced externally as well. Um, so I think I'm not. You know, I'm not here to justify or dis- discredit your 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 um, reaction, but I think it makes sense, right? I think it kind of makes sense. You've had a very emotional connection with Udia, a, a very deep relationship with Udia for a very long time. A and lot I of think, games. And I think it kind of, the rework in a way, forced you to come to terms with your relationship with Udia. Like you hadn't, I guess, addressed where you're at with Udia. It, it was kind of a weird place. And I think you've now officially turned a page. It's like, all right. That's that chapter done. I've had to like let go. Let go. That's what I've. That's why I keep telling myself I've, I've let go. That's not me anymore. You know, playing that champion. And that's okay. Game. And you've changed as a player. Your you, your your view of the game has changed. And I think the game itself has changed. Where you genuinely believe playing that early oriented style makes more sense for the jungle role, and that's the way you interpret the game and the role and the most optimal way to play. Um, so I think there's some lessons there, right? There's some lessons there, and the same thing might happen again eight years later when maybe you you become known for your Rek'Sai and then Rek'Sai gets reworked eight years later. <laughs> you don't have to let go of Rek'Sai. <laughs> you have to let go of Rek'Sai. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So I'm sure there's lessons here and maybe lessons for other people out there when your champion gets reworked because a lot of champions do get reworked. And I've had, cli- I've had clients uh, 
in the MLA that have had similar experiences with Swain and Ari, where Swain got a bit of a rework, Ari got a bit of a, bit of a rework. Ari specifically, I, I've had uh, Ginger and Jurg, two Ari players who haven't fully come to terms with the changes of Ari and how her identity has kind of shifted. And they're living in the past. And it's very easy and comfortable to live in the past because that's what we know. That's where your mastery is built. That's your shape of the game is built around a particular way of a champion functioning. Um, so I think there's a lesson out there for many people. Don't have that knee-jerk reaction. Give it some time. Adju take time to adjust to a champion when it does get reworked. And you might have to, a lot of people might have to come to terms with maybe the way that champion is heading, maybe that's not for you. It might be for you, it might not. Right, it doesn't automatically mean you are you're not locked into a champion for the rest of your life. You can let go of a champion if you want to let go of a champion. So yeah, interesting. All right, so that was yes, yeah, so that's a big lesson, and and I find this all the time. I, I see people in Soul Two, and do you get it as well? Is that they they they? It's not even about a rework here. Like they play like the first, they play like a new champion. They have the first like 10, 20 games and they're like, and let's say they just win like lots of games, right? And then they start going like, this champ's so strong and like open, like this is my champion, right? And then, you know, they get up to game 40, 50. That's when it gets hard. And then they're like, oh, and because the way that we've, we've talked about it before is that the more you play a champion, the more you really get to see its weaknesses. And then you start like, you know, really judging that character, that champion. You're, just, you're trying to find, so there's two ways I view it. Then people try and like get really into the builds and try and adjust the champion to every situation instead of just accepting, you're just going to lose some games, right? We talked about that. It's just like, this is just a bad game for the champion and we're just going to play it out. And then the other way that people respond to it is like, yeah, they just play, they find a champion that that suffices for that, 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 weakness of the champion let's say for example you know again this is literally a narrative that i had it's like i couldn't do anything early game as udi i was like god damn it and if i was rex in this situation i could have done this but then it's like well but udi still has his strengths like udi is a, he, i think he's a really good team fight champion now you know he's awakened w and all that sort of stuff and then you know then i don't have that on rex so it's so easy to nitpick weaknesses and then use items and other champions to try and try and find that excuse for that next champion. Yeah, you're trying to straw man yeah. rather than steal man. That's you're right. looking for the weaknesses of the champion and justify reasons to not have success with him rather than to reasons to have success with him. I think it's a good segue to talk about what the learning journey looks like. So I actually have a a rough uh journey or framework that I like to of apply learning for learning champions. champions. Yeah. I call games zero to 10. That's the ultimate honeymoon period. That's such a honeymoon period. It's so fun because you have no expectations. Even if you lost all 10 games and you have fun with the champ because it's a new champ, new experience, right? You you play better in games zero to 10 than you do 10 to 20. And the honeymoon, it's such a good, because it's like we enter a new relationship. That's the exciting part. It's like a new person. I don't really know about you, their flaws, but like they're showing me the best side of themselves. And you're able to be free for it. Yeah. Because the, there's no mental baggage. Yeah. So zero to 10. Honeymoon, Sunshine, Rainbows. Yep. So you're playing pretty good League of Legends. Yeah. Which is kind of counterintuitive because you don't have that mastery, but that's because that's the power of free, free yes. flow. That's the power of no mental baggage. Yep. Zero to 30 is brutal. Sorry, sorry. 10, 10 to, to 30, 30, sorry, is absolutely brutal. Yep, that's where I gave up at that 10 to 30 phase. <laughs> that's where yeah, you yeah. are in pure, okay, I now am out of that free flow mentality. Now I realize how much I don't know. Now I'm starting to also be a lot more aware of the weaknesses. The... The uh, the initial excitement of like, you know, <laughs> opening a new toy at Christmas is worn off. Yep. You know, it's been a few days now and that's kind of, it, it, it's kind of gone away. And so 10 to 30 is where most people give up. So then you get to 30. Then there's another difficult part, which is 30 to 60. 30 to 60, I like to bunch up because, okay, you've now got over the hurdle. You've, you've proven that you're committing to the champion. Now we really started to get into the nitty gritty where we're kind of, but we understand now the champion's basic identity. We know what they're about. Now we're starting to figure out, okay, what's replicable? What's not replicable? What do I synergize with? What do I do bad against? You're starting to now get a little bit more granular and this requires good reviews, requires study, requires answering, or asking good quality questions. A lot of people give up here as well. The big breakthroughs start to come in the 60 to 80 game mark. That's when you're really starting to make some connections between certain concepts. That's when you've now developed a, lot, a considerable amount of muscle memory. That's when you are now really starting to see the strengths because you actually have the, the uh, muscle memory. You have the mental stack to execute on the champion and think holistically on the champion. 
and uh, get out of your own head essentially and start to enter dabble in free flow states. Then you get to the 80 game mark, right? 80 to 100. That's when you're really now thinking hardcore about wing conditions. You're starting to think about creatively. What's how, your how, own interpretation? How killing the Nexus. Like how to win games with the champion? Yeah, yeah, killing the Nexus, but also finding your interpretation of the champion now. So now you've now you've you've kind of followed a cookie cutter path. You get to game 80. So rather than being uh insert any Udia one trick, which I say you went down this the journey with Udia, and I'm copying some other Udia player, now it would be, okay, how do I interpret Udia? How do I want to win with Udia? That's 80 to 100. Then this is the most, my most recent finding. I find that when you start to approach 100, and let's say you've done this straight, like let's say you've basically, this has been your main focus. In a short, in one time span. Yeah, let's say period. it's two months, whatever it might yep. be. Um, 100 plus, in a way, yeah, I feel like you actually dip. I feel like you actually get worse. Because yep. then you, you kind of, kind of cross the horizon and now you are in your side to get in your own head. You've played so much of the champion. Yeah, and then you're, the weaknesses are very clear of the champion. You're only looking at the weaknesses. Yeah. And I th that's where I'm actually at with my Ari. I felt I played better at the 80, around like the 70 to 80 game mark uh, than I am now going, I'm playing worse with yeah, my Ari. Yeah. Um, and that's a sign that, you know, now you need to kind of just switch up, you know, go back to, you know, stop playing so much of Ari and you know now you can really do play your other champs in your pool so like my for me my Cassio my Victor and I'm now spread between them rather than kind of tunneling now I'm starting to make, go back to my Cassio a little bit I'm not dropping it or anything it's still my trio my Ari my Cassio my Victor but then I see to take my foot off the gas on that Ari journey because you, you kind of just you go too far and you're in your own head I need to take a step back get a different view of the game again recalibrate and then pursue that next level um, so that's my current framework essentially but most people give up in the 10 to 20 10 to 30 sorry and the 30 to 60 yep but if you can sit tight and get to the 60 to 80 game mark thumbs up you're gonna have you're gonna be good you're, you're sailing yeah so what if you so for example the enjoyment of playing in champion because obviously that's the phase that you said they give up because they just stop yeah. enjoying it how do you how do you balance the yeah. enjoyment finding out you know, whether you're actually going to enjoy the champion after that 60 games still. What I would say is this. I've, and, and just to be completely fair, why, why listen to me about this? Yeah. I've done many, many guides. And the way I did my guides is I would play 100 games, around 100 games with the champion in a row, essentially. I have done this process so many times. I know what to expect. So my advice to people when picking up a champion, do it. You have no to give matter it time, what, give it no matter as in like, like it's gonna suck. I'm yeah. just gonna like just be completely frank. There's no way around that. Tr like it's like going to the gym for the first time. It's gonna suck for the first month. It's gonna suck for that first eighty games. Yeah, especially like a great example is the getting into the you know the cardio aspect of it, right? Like mm. cardio is brutal when you first get into it, but then it gets better and better over time. Yeah. So, so my advice, and the only reason I know of this, the reason I'm actually able to stay on a journey of learning a champion is because I know how, I know how it feels to go to, to cross that 60 to 80 game mark. I know that the connections are going to be made and I know that I'm going to be able to think free flow. I'm aware of actually what's happening. I'm aware of why I feel a particular way. So for the people who haven't done this journey, if they, they maybe they never, never done that journey, you just got to kind of, you got to just trust. Like you just got to blindly follow, blindly it. follow and, it. And yeah. and then once you felt those connections being made. Then you, you can, can make the decision. Then you can do it again and again. Cause you know what, you, you know what to expect. Mm. You know what to expect. Mm. So that's kind of like what I have anyway. All right. My next thought, mm. my next uh, shower thought going on about my, how the Udia has affected my overall journey this year. Um, I lost uh, over the last three weeks because of the whole, the pre the, it's like the way that I view it, the preparation up to the Udia Rita because I get okay. in the mindset of like, that's going to be my new main. So I was playing a bit of the old Udia and then I had the Udia phase. And then, you know, now I'm again, I lost so much momentum, it, unbelievable momentum um, through this year because of that Udia rework. And the, like... I'm, I'm revisiting Rek'Sai again and I'm just, oh, dude, I'm making them the snakes that I just have made. Like, I feel like I'm back, to, not back to square one with Rek'Sai. For example, here's a mistake that I've I made this mistake so many times and I just didn't do this anymore before the the, the whole Udia phase. Rek'Sai, Baron situations, right? You don't want to just do the Baron because Rek'Sai is so useless 
when everyone knows where he is and you're just stuck on the Baron because you're super squishy getting hit by the Baron. And my team was calling the Baron and we want to do it. And we were, we were so, I was like six and I was so far ahead. No necessary at all to flip the Baron and I don't call it off. And then we get ace at the Baron and then we insta lose the game. And that was the biggest free win of all time. And in the past, I'll call that off. So I'm revisiting these mistakes that I've made for so long. Like that's just one example specifically. Um, revisiting my Rek'Sai again. So yeah, the what I thinking about the whole like the whole the season is so long, Curtis, that like time is your greatest enemy and ally is what I was thinking. Like you know we talk about how patience, how it's like you got to give it patience, you know, so you give it time. But because the season's so long, because you know how sabotaging and going down is so much quicker than going up, right? Up is up, 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 like like in a really slow progress. But you can go down in two weeks, you can ruin your whole season, right? It's crazy how quickly you can fuck it up. Can right? you ruin your whole season though? Is that an over-exaggeration? Um, well, again, ruin the momentum that I had or like my thought process and like my confidence with right. the game. Like, I mean, I definitely think I've like put a pause to it and I had to re, like re, just go back to my principles, you know, follow the process. Don't think about the end of the wins and losses. But yeah, I mean, for example, I, I've been, I've had, so I have two accounts, my challenger account. And then I had an account that was bouncing in grand mass. So I was trying to get that to challenger as well. So that was around the 500 to like 600 LP mark. And I was pretty much around that the whole season. That was like my other account. And that account now recently, the Nathan Mott one, I went down to like 250, like a huge plummet because of the whole Udia thing, right? And then that sort of affected my confidence in my Challenger account as well. Uh, that's still sitting in Challenger, but I don't play on that enough to sort of really drop, um, which was, that's my account, my double account strategy is I have uh, two accounts so I can reduce the sabotage. But I, I this is the biggest sabotage that I've had in the season, I felt like I absolutely sabotaged it. And this all started from you losing your momentum. Because of the Udia rework. Losing the confidence because you you played with Udia. Yeah. You didn't pursue mastery with Udia. That threw you off. And what particular happened? Is it the, is it the fact that you disappointed in yourself and there was like- Disappointed in myself because of the knee-jerk reaction. Uh, well, yeah, the realization after I really accept that the, the way that I play the game, the way that I view the game- which I think is a positive. I mean, I think there's a silver yeah. lining in that yeah. because now I'm really doubling down now. Like I'm like, all right, let's figure out, you know, yep. let's take Rexar to the next level. And then the third thing is... It's probably just the fit, like you're in a... It's like the uh, the whole serotonin thing, right? Where it's you're in a negative headspace and that imp it probably impacts your decision-making in your, in your games, I'm assuming as well. Yeah. Something like that anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and the whole time aspects, like just, yeah, the season's so long. And I see it with my clients all the time. Like it, there's so much room to just fuck it up, dude. Like there really is. Because remember, the moment you start getting into that negative sort of spiral, bam, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree down. with that sentiment where it's it's easier to self-sabotage than it is to, to go on a hot streak in a way. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it's so easy because it's the yeah. it so it takes so much more effort to do that, but it doesn't take much effort to, to go down. Well, I think that ties more to how league is as a game is played out, where one mistake is a lot more impactful than one good play. Mm. Right? Mm. Um so you let you know, let's get specific, right? Let's go in a game. Let's say you, you're playing your jungle and you, you do great. You do a full clear. You get a gank off top side. You reset, go back. Um, you do a second full clear. You're killing it. Um, and you're in a really, really good spot. All it takes is to trade off the wrong side of the map or compensate one, get get counter ganked. And get triple killed into a get losing rift or something like that. Done. Yeah, You can undo that beautiful for seven minutes just like just that. Just like that, yeah. That's the nature of League. League is a very brutal game in that sense, yeah. right? And then you kind of play that out game and game again. You lose confidence. You're, you're doubting yourself. You're not, free, you're not in that flow state. You hesitate in a play that you should, shouldn't have hesitated on. Boom, you've, 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 you're on the back foot now. So, yeah, that's just the nature of League, I guess. And one of probably the, one of the big contributing factors to why downward spirals are so easy to get into. Um, so what are you going to do about it? What's your plan moving forward? Uh, well, obviously, uh, step one, I'm back to Rek'Sai. Yep. I had a pretty big rake for three weeks, so I'm re make, you know, relearning the mistakes that I've made in the past after get that into muscle memory, building confidence with that champion so I can call off plays like that Baron play. Um, I've dabbled with Jarvan a little bit more, um, and I still have the Volley Bear. 
and I've got a it. question, Nathan, about yeah. how do you wrestle with making the same mistake multiple times? How do I wrestle with making the same? So I've had a few questions from clients at the moment asking, yeah. say, Curtis, I get really, they say things like, I get really tilted, really angry at myself when I, when I make the same mistake. Where I don't, and they say things like, I don't mind making mistakes when it's something that I think that I've made many times. Yeah. And you're talking about, that's kind of what you alluded to before, right? Where you've been in this situation before, you know not to and do this. And in things. the situation, I feel I know what's going to go. I just like, all right, fuck, we're going to lose the game. So, what? Yeah. How do you mentally wrestle with that? What's your toolkit there? Oh, well, uh, I think you got to be really like easy on yourself because league, it's it's fucking hard. like you just bring it back to like, you know, do I have high intensity in this game? Because if you don't have high intensity, you're going to be prone to making those mistakes very easily again and again. So just bring it back to the basics. It's like with diet and sleep and stuff like that, right? Those are the first things you tick off. Um, so that's like my posture. I always say about my posture, my mouse movement. You know, did I get up off my chair and walk around my apartment in queue because my queue times are really long? Um, those are the things in, so those are the things in my toolkit that help me. But yeah, that's the reality of League of Legends. There's so much information. Like the way, the way that I always view about it is that good League of Legends player is able to collect lots of information really quickly and then make the best decision. If you miss one piece of information, everything can collapse. And you just need to respect that part of the game, you know? You know, you can you can randomly lose focus so quickly. You focus on the wrong thing in the game and I think it's you just have to be I think that you can go you can really beat yourself up too much and you just got to embrace it, dude. I don't know, dude. You got to I remember my Elise journey, like how many like when I did it in the off season. We'll talk about off season in the next couple of episodes. I mean, when we get to it, but the off season for me, that was, I think that only reason I'm challenging now is because of the improvement that I did there. And I wasn't even playing the team that I played. I was playing at least like my predator release. And I was just insta losing games at level three again and again and again and again, because I was just forcing bad skill. I just had to like learn how to invade and how to make the game chaotic, chaotic in a certain way. And um, I was making the same mistake again and again, but I don't know. Like you just have, Maybe it was because it's off season and you don't really, I didn't really care too much about my rank progress. I don't know what it was. You know, you talk about the free flow state, you're like, it's like the honeymoon phase. Maybe that's what it was, but I can't even say that because I was in like game 60, 70 making the same mistakes. I think it's just having confidence that eventually it should, you should figure it out. You got to build into your muscle memory. I think it's an element of giving yourself permission to fail. Yeah. You know, I, I, a Ting who asked me this question, I said, he, he said this, uh, he said to me, Curtis, I've had this learning objective about uh, really working on my, he's been working and being, he, okay, specifically, he doesn't want to rush his corky packages, right? And he said, Curtis, I'm so tilted. I'm so angry because I've just, I, I, all my corky packages this game were terrible. And I said, hey, Ting, how many, out of, if we were to play 20 games, how many games are you playing corky? Let's say he gives me a number. Let's say roughly, well, he didn't say this, but r- roughly, let's say it's five, right? Out of those five games, how many situations are you going to be in where you're going to have a great opportunity to do a good uh, corky package? Okay, maybe it's once or twice a game. So there might be at max six opportunities you across- have six chances. Six yeah. chances. Yeah, you know when people say they make the same mistake over and over again? You, you could, your sample size is actually super small. Your sample size, yeah. and, and then think about, extrapolate that even more. Think about how many decisions you're making in a game mm. across 20 games. Mm. Thousands, Thousands, potentially. Yeah. So I said, okay, Ting, I get it. It's, it's, it's aggravating. But cut yourself some slack, man. You're not, it's not like you're drilling this specific thing over. It's not like we're, in a, we're playing baseball and you're in the, bat, the batting cage and you're doing the same swing for hours every day. That's the, that's the thing about League <laughs> of Legends. Yeah, you just got to, yeah. Going back that's to- That's why you have permission to fail though. Time that's why. Is the, yeah, that's a time thing again. Like time, time can be your greatest ally, but enemy as well. Every game, and I'm going to say this time again, every game is the most important and the least important. It's such a hard mindset to it's get. A very that. That's a very difficult mindset. So, so I'm gonna um, talk about one thing recently with me. Um, I have really switched a, a turned a page in my mentality towards solo queue, and um, and I think this is the start of a big transformation for me, both as a coach and as a player and as a person. And I kind of wanted to share this on the podcast today, um, and I think it's a really good segue here for me. I've, we've spoken a lot on this podcast about painful experiences 
dwelling on painful experiences, reflecting on painful experiences after your solo coup boss to burn in those mistakes. And I think that has served me well in many areas of my life where like I've, Absolutely. I've, I've really reflected on these painful experiences and that's helped me not make the same mistakes again. What I've realized is that painful experiences are a double-edged sword. And when exiting, when exiting a rough block, a zero three block, you know, sometimes I found it really difficult to unwind even after reflecting on the block because I took those losses personally. And I'm going to be first to admit that I think that my ego um, sometimes gets in the way of my improvement and, and it gets in the way of me expressing my best self and expressing who I am on the rift. And um, recently I've realized with myself and with a lot of other people in the MLA, they are unable to give themselves permission to fail because they don't really love themselves as a person or accept where they are. And they, they, they're constantly comparing themselves to what they could be. And this is a very difficult thing to talk about because uh, it kind of runs counter to the personal development narrative and the thing that we push on the BBC. But I want to I take time to really articulate this. In my mind, there's a very big difference between pursuing mastery out of just pure love for the game and pursuing mastery because you want to look good or feel good comparatively to other people. Yeah, those are really two big distinctions. They're very, very different things. Mm. And the way one manifests to the other is very different. Now, let's say you are pursuing mastery purely for the sake because you love League. You love the free flow state. You love the... You love the feeling of playing beautiful League of Legends. Like when you, if you truly embrace that, if you were to lose a game, the only thing that should bother you theoretically is whether or not you express your best self. It doesn't really matter how you look. It doesn't really matter what other people think of you. It doesn't matter how much LP you lost to one. It doesn't matter what rank you are. What matters is your performance. What matters is how you express yourself, how you express yourself. And what I've realized is that one of the more common things in in league in solo queue is that it almost encourages the us first them mentality where it's we talk about the dominating your opponent and i feel like the dominating opponent in a way can be perceived in a very negative light it's me versus this person it's curtis versus nathan it's curtis versus charlie it's Coach Curtis versus Nathan Mott. When it should be Coach Curtis versus Coach Curtis. You're against yourself. I'm versus myself. And we said this before, it is you versus yourself. But I haven't actually, just to be first and honest, I haven't, until recently, I haven't truly internalized that. Because when I would go 0-3 in a block, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Oh, what if I'm not challenger anymore? What, if, what, what are other people going to think of me? What are people gonna are people gonna now think I'm a worse coach? Are people gonna now think that I'm not good enough to X, Y, Z, or imagine how I look or how these people are viewing me? How do how do my game play? Imagine what the, my opponent is thinking of me. These are very egotistical and self-centered thoughts. That's the opposite of the pursuit of mastery. That's the opposite of being of me versus myself. And so yesterday, I had a 0-4 block where I was pretty happy with my intensity. And in the last game, I versed someone who I know doesn't like me and has actively abused me many times. And I said to myself after the game, he actually just outplayed me. He played really well. He outmicroed me level one and two. And I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel as a person worse off Less con or less confidence or less worth as an individual because of this game. That's the first time that's happened. And <laughs> I would never feel like that. If I was honest with myself in the past yeah. and I'm honest with the audience, my ego would quote unquote go in defense. There's like a lizard. There's like, there's like this ego defense where it's like, 
oh yeah, I, I, I'm better than that guy. Like, I, if we first him, I'll beat him. Or, you know, I, don't worry, I was higher ranked than him. I'm higher ranked than him. Or I was higher ranked. It's just always some bullshit. Yeah, you want to, yeah. There's always something I want to like get an edge over him. I'm trying to get an edge over him. You're actually better than him. I'm just, it's just insecurity speaking. Yeah. But when you bring it back to just, did I express, did I express, my, express my best self? Yes. Okay. Then if I express my best self and I still didn't get the result that I wanted, then what's next? What are the learnings here? Let's get specific. And the devil's in the details, the, the medicine. That's the medicine. And that was a very beautiful experience to me. Did I feel any worse off because of the 0-4 block of that game? No. I was happy to have a beautiful evening with my girlfriend. It is what it was. You just and it is what it, it is. Yeah, it, it is what it is. He outplayed I can me. Only, I can only do what I'm capable of. And, and, and now that doesn't mean that there isn't room to grow as a player. It doesn't mean there's no room to grow as a person. But it does mean I am okay now. Like, so there's two types of personal development, I believe. There is this pursuit and, and just development as a league player. As a player, right? Let's so, so we'll keep it league related. I can get better. I can be high rank. I can do this better. I can do this better. I can do this better. It's always like... Better, 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 better. I could be, I could be this. I could be that. I could be like that guy. I could be that. I could be this, this, this. That, that just really sucks the fun out of the game. It doesn't sucks it? the fun out of it. It yeah. sucks the, the free flow. It's, it's it, it, it sucks. You're not, you're not free flowing that mentality. You gotta have fun when you're playing league, man. It has to be childlike in a way. Mm. And and I think that that's very that's very different to okay. There is room for growth here in my level of play, but where I'm at. I'm still worth self. I'm still worth respect. I still respect myself and I am okay as a person with where I'm at right now. Instead of comparing yourself to future Curtis. Yes. There is no comparison between me and my future Curtis. There is me. And then there is some version of myself in the future, but that's, that's beside the point. I might, I'm, I'll get there, you know? And I think something that's really helped me is just completely detaching from that comparison. It is not me versus anyone else. And whatever result I end up, if I finish master tier at the end of the season, hmm. as long as I can say to myself that I tried, okay, we can use the preseason to get into the process and see what I could do better. Maybe there's something wrong with my process or my champ pool or my approach to the game or whatever it might be. Does that mean I don't want to get challenged? No, of course I want to get challenged. I'm going to try to get that. That's something I want to get. But if I don't, I don't. If I lose, I go zero three. If this person thinks I'm the worst player in the world, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, I'm on my own journey. And I think that a lot of people who struggle, who get extremely tilted and angry over a mistake, are missing this self-love element, this self-appreciation, this compassion to of where they're at as a person, and as a player, in the game, in that moment, in that moment. And I think, obviously, this is all easier said than done. And I totally get that. And I don't even, and, and to be honest, I don't even know how to translate this mentality. I don't. It's something where I'm, I'm figuring out myself and I'm kind of sharing this with the audience and you. I don't know how to really translate, transfer this. It's something that I feel. Um, and I feel a lot happier and a lot more present and a lot more free flow. And I'm really looking forward to, to how, seeing how my play now from this point onwards changes. Yeah, that'll be very interesting. Would you say that you... I was going to say, like, obviously winning is obviously fun, right? We can't we can't deny that, right? You, you, go, you know, you always say it's like your emotional state after a 3-0 block versus 0-3 block. Like, you know, before you said that it was, you know, before, really big, yeah. right? Because now I'm just trying to think. It's like, I mean, do you enjoy losing you again you just don't think about the result right it's like as long as i played really we talked about this before it's like as long as we play well and we still lose you still gonna be like okay i'll play with high intensity that's right and that's why we talk about high intensity that's all the right time, the, right? yeah the, the the trap you got to get out of what i'm trying to, even with myself i'm trying to get out of this trap is it's not about it really it really it, it isn't like it's so crazy to me because <clears throat> Where this gets confusing is because we're all 
we have goals, you know, we have like maybe something that excites you, you know, you have this goal that you want to re-challenge or whatever. It's not, a, it really isn't about that end destination. It's so cheesy, but it isn't about the end destination. It isn't about the, sorry, the destination. It's about the journey. And it's about how you perform and how you express yourself in that one game. Now, you can't, it's not like you're never thinking about the win or loss because at the end of the day, it's a game and there's a nexus and the nexus has to explode or it doesn't explode, right? The question then isn't, did I explode the nexus or not? It's, okay, did I make the right decision? Did, did I make the most optimal decision in that? Did I make the most optimal decision that I'm currently capable of making? And then if it, if it is and it still didn't work, then let's figure it out. Let's get let's into the issue. Let's figure it out. At the end of the day, that, that's it's, your skill level. Like. It's not that you're not thinking about the result. It's that you're, you're, you're removing the egotistical part out of it. You're removing the whole, I, it's like me as an individual, me as a person, I am not a shit person because I lost this game. <laughs> like I don't deserve respect for myself because I lost this game. It's, it's thinking long-term, what you always say. It's, it's actually thinking, okay, I, I know where I want to be. And I, I kind of know, you know, maybe some skills I need to develop. But the only way to develop them, or the, in the most, quote, and I think I, I believe to be now even the most efficient way, is to get rid of, like, really try and break it down to the expression of yourself and 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 the pursuit of mastery in, in its most purest form. And this is something I think I don't have the language for, and I really need to kind of dig deeper on this. And I think there's things missing here, but the play yeah yeah so charles here talking about we, we're, we're going to be reading effortless mastery next month for the bbc book club and the yeah the the the, the childlike mentality and, and the and we 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 play to play we play league, we play league to it's we play league we don't like perform league in a way it's like we play league it's a it's a game there's an expression of yourself like there's that childlike mentality and i think that um i think i, I think we what we've kind of realized this year as well the importance of free flow state as well mm. I think we've actually kind of turned a page in our coaching in, in, in a certain in a certain way this this year. The importance of free flow instead of overthinking, like like because you can be really analytical. Yeah, you can be very analytical. We talked a lot about the analytical versus intuition. Yeah, that's right. A lot. So I don't want to go any. Like, I don't want to. Yeah, I feel like we can go in circles around this for a while, but that's at least something that I'm ex I'm trying to explore, and I'm going to I'm going to really. This is something that I'm going to dig deep on, like the 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 men the approach towards soul. What's the optimal approach towards solo human and like, learning and learning mentality wise like what does it look like that's what i'm trying to figure out um so that's where i'm at for me at least anyway kind of comparing your situation to my situation the way that i think about it's like okay you, you've had your you, you know you said that you felt content with your happy with your performance even though you went zero four mm. okay and that's that's a different feeling you've had before i'm happy with to, uh, uh, let's say that it's it's because I don't, I don't know something about i'm happy with my form i'm happy with the way I expressed myself okay, is a better way games. of framing it. Because when I when I hear the word happy with performance, it means like everything I did was perfect. Yeah. And that's like the quote unquote optimal things to do. I don't really feel like that. Like happy, I'm happy with my how I express myself doesn't always mean that there because sometimes when I hear well, at least the way I interpret happy with my performance, it's almost like there's no room to grow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But there is okay, room to grow. Maybe you know? it's got to reframe it. You're happy with your reaction to the zero four block the rather than before content yeah content's an interesting word it's it's uh, you know what it is it's kind of like i'm just accepting it it's like just accepting it okay no okay that, thank you for this yes thank you for this the kenny werner thank you for that experience yeah that's actually genuinely what i felt mm. genuinely thank you for this so we'll see how this goes. This could be like a knee-jerk reaction. Let's see if you go zero four right. for the next seven days, let's, and let's, then let's see if we're let's still see, saying thank you for Let's this. see. Yeah. Let's see how long, how much "quote unquote" bad moments I can go through without "quote unquote" relapsing or whatever. Mm. You know, like I don't mm. know what's going to happen. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm in, I'm in hardcore uncharted territory right now. Mm. Everything it's, that it's I just always said, been, I want to dominate my opponent. Everything that I just said, in a way, is kind of contradicted my mentality towards the game. For the past few months, years, like I'm in complete, I'm in complete uncharted territory right now, mm. and I'm really learning about myself and my my mentality, my ego, and all this shit. Like I'm 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 doing some di digging, guys. I'm just being completely transparent. I have nothing to hide. That's kind of where I'm at. All right. Next topic. 
Okay, I've got one thing I want to talk about. Um, got a few things actually. Um, I've got actually okay. I got two things, and I do think they go into each other quite nicely. Um, I've actually got a, pl- a person in the MLA, and he was breaking down his this moment in a game where he's like Yone into a zero. And he's kind of, you know, you obviously want to E into Q3 as Yone, right? Get the knockup, get the short trade, boom. And he was in lane and this Azir sidestepped two of his Q3s. And he realized upon review that when he missed those Q3s, it then became personal. And his mentality in the game was... I need to shit on this guy. I need to prove him that I'm better. I need to I need to get back at this guy. That was literally quote what he said. I need to get back at this Azir. And he we did this little review where he, he sent me this video where he said, okay, this is the moment where my mindset shifted. I have now gone from wanting to, quote unquote, just express my best self to I need to prove this guy. I need to show him <laughs> that I'm better than him. And then he ends up making really poor decisions. He goes for like a really, he, he takes good trades, then he goes for a dive and dies. And then he ends up killing him later and then question marking him and like just doing all this really, like he's just jacked up mentally. And how the hell are you going to be free flow with that mentality? It's impossible. It's, impossible, it's actually right? gone out the window. There is no, there is no expression of mastery. There is no free, that is gone out the window. Unless you are at the peak, peak, peak of mastery. I think there are certain people like, you know, Michael Jordan, he had a he had a knack for making things personal, getting people into like that uncomfortable zone. And then like that's where he thrived in a way. Everything that we're saying here today, I think it's a highly personal thing. I don't think there is in a way when I say I'm trying to figure out what the most optimal way for Solky is. That's like, there will be, this will be, again, my interpretation. You could be very different to me. Michael Jordan, if he played league, would be very different. I think everyone has their own toolkit and the way they want to approach the game. But I think it's impossible. I'm going to say this straight up. I don't think it's possible for someone that doesn't have complete mastery over their craft to ever make it personal. The only reason Michael Jordan was able to make things personal and, and still perform at an extremely high level was because he had complete and utter mastery over his craft. He was the professional, right? You can only be like that if you are a professional. So for this guy, Fiano, who did this, he crumbled. He played like shit. So if you ever find yourself trying to make things personal, getting in this whole like egotistical fucking, you know, I got to shit on this guy. I got to prove him. Who the hell... Who the hell cares, dude? You're some random D4 player versus another random D4 player. It's all relative. Someone could do the same thing to you. What are you going to, you know, it's, there's always someone who has more money or has more LP or is better at this than you and is stronger than you in this. Like, if you get into that rat race, you're done, dude. You're just done and it doesn't end well. What are your thoughts on this, Nathan? Yeah, I mean, oh. I mean, uh, let's say I'm, I'm, I mean, just for me, I, I mean, I don't really, you know, your whole thing, the dominated opponent. I mean, I'm, I've always been very critical. That's that the end of review thing is, is the, the self it's all on you, man. And if you make one mistake, bam, that's just how I've learned the game over the last couple of years. And that's got no, like how could that it's be nothing it's to, to do, do with the enemy? It's nothing to do with the enemy. It's yeah. you and yeah. your decision. That's been very effective for me, man. It has. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, you know, that again, we've talked about the dangers of that and beating yourself up too much. And obviously I have, and I've, I've made myself a worse player because I lose confidence for it. But over the long term, it goddamn has helped. I mean, I can't, I can't say not like I've had my periods of, you know, but that's, that's, that's where it, it's born from. Yeah. And I, I definitely have clients that are, I mean, I mean, it definitely, I'm trying to think, I definitely have had some games I can recall in the last week where I will like make a play. It go doesn't go the way that I wanted to go, and then I just keep running at the enemy. Is that the same thing? Right, I want to. I want to flesh something out. Sorry, like just to be really clear here. I feel like the dominate your opponent, like making it personal thing, and like just dominate your opponent, like that whole like that mentality. It's a it's a very double edged sword. When it works well, it works really well. Like you, you, you play better in a way. You've got like all the confidence. You know, the typical one is like, if you dodge your first couple of skill shots, you're in that guy's head and you know, I'm just going to dodge every skill shot. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or like, hit in every single I think shot. There's a, I think there's an element of like recognizing like tendencies of a player without again without getting it egotistical. You can kind of just express your best self and dominate someone in, in in a way. I feel like there's 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 ways to do that. I don't know how to do that. I want that's something I want to figure out. How do I how do I really play to my limit and not let my my ego say, "Oh yeah, look at me. Look how much look how much better I am than this guy. Look how much I'm scaring him." Ha ha ha, you know, laugh at this guy. Like, how do I how do I capture that? How do I avoid that? Sorry. How do I get out of that mental rut? You know, that's what I'm going to try and explore. But the point I want to get across here is that that dominate your opponent mindset, because people are going to say that really works for me, but I think it's a double-edged sword. When it works, it works well. So you go into that game. I go into that game and let's say, well, let's say we use his example. You own into his ear. Let's say he hits those first few Q3s and starts dominating this as year and gets in his head and then his laughing question mark him. Ha, 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 I'm better than this guy. Whatever. If he feels great, Fianna will feel great about himself. I'm superior. I, he gets this massive confidence boost and he's feeling amazing. Boom. What happens when he versus a better player? What happens when he loses and he has a mentality? What's going to happen to your self-confidence? What's going to happen to your self-worth? What's going to happen to your mentality? Done. You're done. So it's high highs and and very that's low the thing. lows. You're, you're getting into the high highs and low it's lows. It's a lot. Is that you're not stable like that? That's that's when people get on huge win streaks yes. and huge loss streaks. It's the high highs. And we high know lows. these players in solo queue that are like that. They have Streaky. extremely high highs and they they skyrocket and they're killing and they're out of the lines and they go in a hole. The goal where you're trying to get to is a loss and a win. You have the same feeling. That's the goal. That that's would be that would be amazing. And and no matter who you're versing. You are always expressing your 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 best play, mm. no matter what, mm. against anyone in any situation. So I think that yeah, that there's a double edged sword to that dominate your, your opponent mentality. Hence why I think it has its advantages, but it has its disadvantages, and I think it can do more damage personally than it does more positive. I think it does more damage. Um. The other thing I will say, I've actually had someone at the moment quit the MLA and he sent me this long message. So I really want to read this out because I think it's an important message to spread. So his name's Kari. He's a long-term MLA member, really, really nice guy. And he's always kind of been, he's really trying to, he gave it his all. Like he, I said, just give it your all. Let's play champs you love. Let's do the whole thing. And he, he kind of called it quits. And I really want to share this message here. He said, coach, I've come to terms with the fact that league isn't the game for me right now. I still hope that one someday I'll be able to come back, but I've decided to focus on fighting games, another genre I've always wanted to try and be competitive at, and I was an RTS player in the past. Looking back on my season this year, I can say with absolute certainty that your process works. I did climb after all. I started the season in Silver 3 and pe peaked at Plat 2. That's and I did learn a ton about the game. Unfortunately, one of the things I learned is that I do not click with the fundamental nature of the game. I have a ton of respect for you for the MLA and everything that you were doing for the league community as a whole. And I don't think that I could have enjoyed the game at all if not for the MLA. And I'm glad to have had the chance to be a part of it. League is a fascinating game and I'm a bit jealous of people who click with it so well. There are a lot of things I learned which I could go on and on about, but I thought it would be best to just give one major takeaway. As I've been getting into fighting games over the last past weeks, I've noticed that my entire attitude about how I approach competition is so much healthier now than it has been in the past. I'm journey oriented now rather than results oriented. I never expected that I'd be able to make such a shift. Um, and this is something that I, I learned this from you and the rest of the MLA and it's something that I hope continue to develop. Um, and so the big thing for Kari is that he couldn't fundamentally wrestle with the idea that some games are out of your control and that there are factors out of your control that are going to prevent you from winning a game. That's very hard for people that play single play competitive yes, games. Exactly. Like fighting games. Fighting games and um, yep. And RTSs. RTSs. I, I think it's also the same as well for somewhat. I have some FPS players in Soul 2 that struggle because you can like 1v nine more so much in fps games if you're just really you know it's like the whole call of duty modern warfare 2 like you like let's say when i was playing you know pugs i mean i guess i didn't play the competitive sort of side of of those shooting games but you you'd never blame your teammates right it's like oh i i, I could have killed that guy could have killed that guy could have killed that guy but in league you you do sort of need to play more so you know with your team and play around your i mean a lot of what we say is that the best league of legends you play is you got to know what your team wants to want to know how to what your team wants to do so that which will impact how you play the game, and sometimes that's very hard for people to really understand. 
Yeah, that's a really, really good point. And I think that the message that I, I kind of wanted to push here was that if league isn't for you, league is for you. Don't force it. There are plenty of games out there. Well, you know, again, going to that mindset you've talked a lot about this episode, hmm. it's like the whole do your job mentality. Like like the what, what we're getting, what we're teaching, I think this is really hard for people to really grasp is if you do your job, yes, results follow. Consist, like results follow. And it actually becomes a single no, player game. You miss the most modern way. If you do your job consistently. consistently. Yeah. Yeah. Consistency is the most important thing concept in league in league mm. to climbing it is actually like the number one thing you can play well obviously and then you don't you completely do the opposite of your job you make it hard consistency for is the something that like people don't get it is it is really the number one key to success in climbing in solo because i view solo queue as more i view it as a single player game in a way i really do and that's not like a negative thing i'm just viewing it's like i have got to do my job i got to play on my teammates i got to look at lane states I got to collect the information. I got to do the best decision possible. I can, and results, if you do that really well, you learn that and you understand that results come. But you know, intuitively that even when you do your job, you're still going to lose some games. Absolutely. That's right. That's, but you've come to terms with that. Some people, for whatever reason, because of their gaming background, cannot come to terms with that fact. Yeah. They get, if I do my job, how's that possible? If I play perfectly in RTS, I win those games. That's right. Yeah. It's a, and it's easier said than done for some people, you know? It's really hard to really embody that, it is. I find. It is. That's actually, the I think, the, one of the hardest things. I can do my job, I can tick all the boxes, and I can still, still lose. lose. It's a and tough one. Yeah, it's a tough, very, very tough one. And so that's why consistency comes into play. It's not about that one game. It's not about the two. not about three. It's not about the weaker games. Yeah, it's about months and months You know what, Remember, months months you know and months what people again. do? They can do that for like uh, a couple of days or whatever. Let's say they start playing well, but everyone forgets how many games they lose for their teams by completely doing the opposite of the job, making their enemy, your team's job harder than they actually, everyone likes to forget those games. People don't want to register the trolls on the enemy team. They want to register the trolls on their team. Yeah. I mean, if I can think about how many games I've been the one that I'm, you could objectively look at my gameplay. Like, dude, Nathan Mott is trolling this game. Like literally int in this game. It's true. Like, um, it happens. I'm, I lose more games and for my team than I win, you know? Well, not exactly because I have a higher than negative percent win rate, but, you right. know, like, you know, you could really look at it that way. Yeah, so I just wanted to spread that message. I think it's an important one. Mm. Did you have any other... Let me jump in a mailbag. Yep. Away we go! Jingle song. All right, first question here is from Steve. Tyler's email is playing on a boosted account a good way to learn. Hello, Nathan and Curtis. I started playing League two years ago because another MOBA I played, Heroes of the Storm, died. In Heroes of the Storm, I was hard stuck gold in the game for two seasons until I decided to one trick a hero in the game. Then within two seasons, I reached number 36 on the North American ladder. What I found after reaching high elo in that game was that even though I was a one trick for one season, in the next season I branched out my hero pool to add four more heroes, some of them being the ones I was hard stuck gold with before. I believe now that the actual experience of playing in high elo games made me better at the game. Those previous heroes that I was hard stuck with could now get me to maintain my high ranking in the game because I learned so much from the experience of high elo games. Right now in league, I'm in plat three and peak diamond two earlier in the season. That's a very big jump. We'll explore that. My question now is that, do you guys think it is worthwhile to play on a high ELO account to learn the game better? I've heard Curtis say before that you're only as good as your opponent, so I figured it might be a good idea as I go in with the attitude that I'm going to get destroyed and not that I deserve to be in Master Tier. My overall goal being to observe how I get destroyed by the enemy and what I can do better. So I want to quickly clarify something here. Um... He's actually conflating two things. When he was talking about his experience in, in Heroes of the Storm, he said that um, he simultaneously one started one trickier champion and got to high elo. Yeah. You're conflating two things here. You learned a lot about the game for two reasons. Not just because you're high elo. I would argue that it was mainly because you one tricked a champion. So, so the, the one... The most important thing in league, and as he, as as you actually know, um, 
when you one trick a champion, your mental stack becomes freed up freed. so you can think about the game holistically. Exactly. This reminds us of when we talk- when we did the Kenny Werner episode and he says on the piano uh you say you can play one chord or one note. You're a, you're a pianist for one note or you're a pianist for one chord. In a way, he was a league, a real hots player on one hero. Now, when you do that, you get to feel and experience many things about the game. You know, thinking about holistically, you're thinking about how to kill the Nexus. You're thinking about your like matchups and like creative team fighting and your positioning and jungle tracking, whatever the hell. I don't know. I don't really know how HOTS works. Um, but the point being is you, you, you are able to think about the game at a much higher level. So it actually has very little to do with the opponents that you're versing. It's actually all you in your own head and the mental stack and the muscle memory that you developed. So I would, if anything, I would actually recommend the opposite. If anything, typically in league, I recommend people to actually sometimes even play on a lower ELO account to get them to learn the game and get the mastery down pat. And then as your mastery develops, your rank matches up perfectly with your mastery. So it's like a, it's like a, everything's on a level playing field in a way. That's actually the thing that makes the most sense to me. That's actually what I recommend for people learning champions. I actually always recommend playing your first, sometimes 30 games on a second account that's lower. And then, yeah. So, um, yeah. Do you think you, you want to add there? Um, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Uh, not, that's not a good idea because you know, a, a dangerous thing I've seen for this as well is if you play in high yellow, you start, you actually will win games, but you might win games, not for the mm-hmm. reason thing. Guess what? You're going to be doing the platinum games. Oh, why is this so hard? I could easily win games in master. That is very difficult to recover yeah. from. Cause that's always in your mindset. Um, also, you just got to really just, I mean, you got to have your own journey, man. Yeah. And you just, you get to your own journey and you can learn the game very, very, very well at all ranks. You know, I, I, I have a gold player um, who, who was gold four and he's like shot up to about gold one. And he said he's felt, he's felt like he's understanding so much more about the game. He actually can actually review even our high members in Soul 2 and actually help like literally could like break down and be like oh that makes sense but he's still getting that execution and knowledge he's trying to close, trying that, to close gap, that gap which yeah he doesn't play that much and he's getting there slowly you can actually understand the game but remember the execution is two different things yeah so um yeah he has a really good he understands things and he's like oh damn it, nathan why do i make this such a basic mistake you know like i know this and that's the part where you need to practice that's a, a lot. tough thing you said something that was really interesting there. i love that where uh, I've had clients, I've got a client at the moment, I'm going to call him a Beats, who, who's actually playing on a, he got an account that's higher MMR, right? He did the whole new account thing. And um, he's platinum, but he's in like playing diamond lobbies. And if he's doing well in like uh, against D1 mids and stuff. And I'm super worried that yeah. like what you said, you, you win a game in a high MMR lobby. And now that's like, you're anchored to that rank now. Like in mentally, you're like, I should be at this rank or... You know, but it's not about winning that one game, right? It's not about that guy who wins in Master Tier once. It's about over 300 games. Are you still at this rank? You know, that's that's what that's really right. dictates your level of play. And that's actually a really important danger for you to highlight. I'm glad you highlighted that. What I'll also say here is that uh, when you play in a high-low lobby, right, and you lose, sometimes you don't know, you, you'll actually, you'll find it difficult to, to know what the problem is. You actually w- won't know if you're genuinely getting outplayed at like a game, like your game understanding is missing, like there's something at like a game level or your champion mastery is not good enough, right? So that's why I actually like going down in a rank. If you if you actually learn on a second account, you know 100% it's got nothing to do with your understanding about the game. It's purely champ mastery that's missing. You know what I mean? Like you, you're actually isolating problems more. So when you play on a high low, it just makes it very confusing. Uh, that's another thing as well. Next question here is from Zach. The title of this email is Two Block Process. Hello, Nathan and Coach Curtis. Zach here. I was really hoping to share my findings of running two games per block. I've been following the three block process for around a year now. However, the emotional side of the game has continued to create problems for me. Overall, I'm your typical player uh, who can mental boom very easily. I have tried pretty much everything from taking two days off although I continue to have these issues. This podcast has been a huge help in my growth as a player. However, playing two games per block has started to really let me see the game for what it is. I really would like to emphasize that stepping away from your computer is just as important as playing your block. 
Currently, I am playing six games per day, but a two-block process has allowed me to actually spend more time reviewing, and it's forced me to spend time away from the game. This has been a huge help for my mental, so I was hoping to share it with anyone who is struggling mentality. Love the podcast. Keep it up. Yeah, I love this message. Um, Mysterious, the other coach in the MLA, actually wrote an article for the, uh, this recently. He is a massive fan, uh, advocate for breaks. Stepping away from the computer, like taking a day off from the game. He, he said for him- That helps him a lot. It's like- huge and he recommends it to many many clients and many many clients love it they get a lot of results with it um sorry that i think there's a really important just taking a day off a week sometimes like because i think daniel had this problem as well um where he's playing so much league he's got this ambitious goal and he's three blocking three blocking every day getting in the view doing all these things or some people even do the other way around where they're like oh i've only been able to play two blocks so then they they play this they play like you know, more like three, three blocks on a Saturday. And then they don't, they, they keep doing the same thing on a Sunday. They're never taking a day off from the game. So it's hard to kind of take a step back and realize like, what the fuck is going on? Mm. Um, so taking a break is very important. And I love the two blocks. A lot of professionals, working professionals in the MLA uh, have a lot more success with two blocks because they're so drained at the end of the day. They don't have the energy to do a three block. So yeah, I really love that. Two blocks are great. I love them. I love the, you know, he hasn't completely... You know, he's he's taken some of our philosophies from and then tried his yes. he's worked it. That's that's a really powerful mindset, you know, especially with any coach or any, you know, mentor. It's like, you know, take, you know, he's tried that out, but then he's found a better thing that suits him. That's a very critical thinking mindset that will help him learn the game, learn champions. And I think it just aspects all, you know, really helps to really have that. It's like a very aggressive a very a great student he's a great student yeah. that's, a, that's something that we spoke about before right? what makes a great student that's a, a quality of a great student he's going out of his way to test things on his own on his own mm. and, and develop his own toolkit mm. he's, he's proactive proactive that's the word yeah. I'm not aggressive proactive proactive I love it all right next question here is should I stop playing Kane I'm currently sitting in gold four with a 70% win rate over 40 games on Kane I keep expecting my win rate to go down to around 50 as this is my first season playing more than 100 ranked games, but I just keep winning. The issue is I don't love Kane. I don't hate him, but I don't want to be a Kane one trick. But I feel like I'm just throwing away LP if I don't play him. I'm also worried that Kane is inflating my ELO because of how you can get away with awful positioning by using his E. Should I keep playing Kane and see how far I can get with him or take him out of my pool to avoid bad positioning habits? After writing this and looking at what I wrote, I feel like I know the answer is I haven't played enough games to even be worrying about something like this. I would like to still hear your, hear your opinion though. This is a tough, this is actually a really tough question in my opinion. I, 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 there's many ways we can approach this, but it's a jungle one, Nathan, so I'll let you start. All right, well, I mean, I don't really think this is, I think that you can definitely think of some champions that may, you know, we talk about champions that may teach you some bad habits, um, like Katarina and Vlad and stuff like that. Um, firstly, I mean, it's great that he's really aware of it. So I find that if you play these champions and you're sort of aware, like when the review, you know, maybe you think it's like, you know, oh, this bad position, like this is actually bad position. But there's also an element of champs like Kane and, you know, the bad position actually is sometimes a good thing because it baits the enemy into bad positions. That's actually a part of the champion sometimes. Um, I think you, if you think of it that way, I don't feel like you don't really develop bad. It's only, it's only if you're not aware of this, the bad habit develops. Does it make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. I, I see where you're coming from. And I, did, I definitely think that's a component of Kane, like baiting people in and, mm. and utilizing the train and stuff. But what I will say here is that I think this is a more of a question directed to like understanding your league journey. And, you know, typically I'll say, Nathan, I try to, this is actually something I was going to talk about in the BBC, the, the, the episode, might as well go on about it here. You know, some people fantasize and about being a one trick, you know, there's something sexy about being a one trick, you know, it's like, it's convenient. It's very easy to kind of like, it's just a convenient way to pigeonhole yourself. It's like, oh, I am X player. And it's a way of kind of simplifying the game. And I, and I do, I do get that massively because you're, you're cutting out all the fat. It's just this champion. I'm going to pick it no matter what. I find there's a lot of dangers to being a one trick and anyone who only plays one champion, I get a little bit ugh, like, like I think there's a lot of potential dangerous rabbit holes or pit pit. What are they calling? Like, like pit holes to fall into. 
And one of the big ones is you, you develop a very narrow view of the game. Whether or not it's Kane, it doesn't even matter if it's Kane. It's just one champion. I don't like playing one champion. This kind of runs counter though to that argument before with the other hot guy where he says he one tricked a champion and then was able to kind of expand when he got high elo. But I would say that's uh, like, I think this is where it does get specific to the champion you play. Cause I think there was, there are stories like what uh, the showmaker where he was a Katarina one trick. He yep. got to high elo and then he learned the game. One of the yeah. best players in the world. So that's a testament to that. But I also think it might even be personality differences. I have known many one tricks that have maybe one tricked Vlad. They've dug themselves a massive hole and now they don't even really want to go down this rabbit hole, but they're kind of forced to because of how much mastery they've played Vlad and they don't want to go backwards. Or they've done the same thing with Katarina or they've done the same thing with Galia or whatever it might be. So for the majority of players, I just say you're better off playing two champions, even two. It doesn't have to be three, just two. 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 I think two is a really good two one. Two is a really good number. Rexar and Volibear for me, like they're actually a little bit different, like pretty different. Like Volibear, I go full tank build mm. and the Rexar, I'm killing people. And it doesn't even really matter what they are, just two champions. Mm. You just need to get out of your own head. You want to not view the game one mm. very mm. unique way. So if it were me and I were kind of going down my journey, maybe climbing for the first time, knowing what I know now, I most definitely wouldn't be a one trick. I would play two champions. I mean, you played Ziggs and Zerath, didn't you? Yeah, I always played Same two. I never style. played one. Yeah. Ne in my entire journey, I never mm -hmm. only played one champion. I always played two, at least, at minimum. Um, and even now when I climb, I, I, I generally have the most success playing two, maybe three max, honestly. So I think um, what I would recommend if I was him is pick another champion and play him alongside Kane. And then now it doesn't matter if... if um, like you might be way better at Kane than your other champion. That, that it is what it is, but because we all have natural tendencies towards champions, right? And like I'm sure maybe your Rexai might be a bit better than your Volley Bear. I mean, I don't know if that's true. Do you, do you think like that's true? Uh, I go through phases. Go through my, phases? If you think if you actually look at my Volley Bear win rate, it's like sixty five percent. All right, all right regardless, I think that most people do have a tendency in their pool, though. Like mm. they they even if they play two champs, like yep. one might be slightly better than the other. Yeah. Um. But I would recommend playing two champions. Mm. That's that's my take. And yes, you will go down. Um, I, I definitely think that's better than... He could probably go keep going down this journey with Kane, get to P4, and then learn another champion. You can also do that as well. He also hasn't really... He's only played 40 games. And so we don't thing. know. We don't know what's going to happen, I right? think he yeah. needs a lot more games. And I think that you only get into... You really, really develop bad habits when you've played like that champion. Hundreds. Thousands. Thousands. Multiple yeah, seasons. Exactly. That's right. You're not really a one trick until you've played it for multiple... Like a whole season. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, or multiple seasons. That's great. So yeah, he's so early days. It doesn't even. He, don't, he doesn't even have an identity as a player no. yet. There is no identity. You can shape that identity. He's never played more than hundred ranked games in yeah. a season. Uh, you know, riffing on this a little bit more. You know, what when people ask, should I be a one trick? You know, and they they or, or they say, you know, how do you know if you should be a one trick or not? I say, you got to love your champion so much. You 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 don't give a shit about its weaknesses in a way like mm. you will pick it no matter what if you're if, if you're fantasizing about oh i wish i could play that or this champion i should be counted i'm counted by this if like you're getting into that rut one tricking is not for you like one tricks what we know they never talk about draft in that way mm. they're like it's just they're just they don't it. care they have so much fun they're having so yeah. much fun they don't give a flying fuck yeah. about yeah well, draft. The, i always say when i get into draft mindset i become a worse player always when I'm trying to pick the best champion Nippy. for the draft. Yeah. So, and going back to that HOTS player, you know, I don't have the answer for this. I, I truly think some people, they're able to kind of like, they're able to kind of, exp I don't know how, why some people are able to expand from a one trick and others aren't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know. I'm going to say it straight up. I don't know that. I don't have that answer. Yeah. All I've, so all I've seen and just from my birth experience is that there's, it's a flip. Yeah. Some can, some can't. I, I'm, I'm yet to figure that out yet. And if anyone has any theories about that, why some people can and why some people can't, let me know. Let us know. Uh, if you have a theory about that, but I don't know. I haven't figured that one out either. It's a mystery to me. It's a big mystery. I think it's an important mystery to solve though. I think it is. All right. Well, that's it for the podcast. Good work, everyone. Let's keep on improving and we'll see you next episode.